Hi, everybody. This is Dick Sharon and Lania again to talk about a really interesting play we saw last night. It's called, of all things, Fetch Clay, Make Man. It's written by Will Power, directed by Debbie Allen, has five actors, including Ray Fisher, who stars as Ali, Edwin Lee Gibson as Step and Fetch It, Wilkie Ferguson and Brother Rashid, Alexis Floyd as Sonia Clay, Ali's wife, Bruce Nozick, William, uh, William Fox, and Freddie L. Fleming, who actually played Muhammad Ali last night as the understudy. It plays at, at the Kirk Douglas Theater in, in, in uh, Culver City, just plays to Sunday. So you better hop on it if you want to see it. So the play is about the unlikely friendship between Muhammad Ali and uh, Stepin Fetchett. And for those of you who, um, I think there's nobody in the world living today who doesn't know who Muhammad Ali is, but I think that there could be um, quite a few people who don't know who Stepin Fetchett uh, was. And Stepin, Stepin Fetchett originally began his career as a vaudeville actor. Uh, he was born in 1904, I believe it is. And um, he had quite a, a significant career in Hollywood in film, um, as I said in, in earlier before film in vaudeville. And he was sort of the uh, a black celebrity when there really weren't very many black celebrities. But the roles that he played, much like what were pretty much the only roles that were offered to him, roles that made him ap appear like a buffoon. Um, some called him a coon, some called him a sellout, because he played these roles that made the Black community um, look like we were a bunch of idiots. And a lot of Black people in the Black, a lot of people in the Black community um, resented uh, that he took on those roles. But there were those who understood that, you know, he, he needed to make a living. And so that's what he did. So anyway, it's about this unlikely relationship between Muhammad Ali, who was just coming up. It's, it takes place probably uh, in, during a week, a week before Muhammad Ali's second fight with Sonny Liston. And at the time, Muhammad Ali was the uh, heavy work, he heavyweight champion, boxing champion of the world. And he was uh, fighting Sonny Liston uh, the second time to defend his, his title. He had uh, taken the title from Sonny Liston uh, about a year before. And so um, the whole play takes place as Muhammad Ali is preparing for this fight. Right, so, so one interesting thing to me was, ordinarily you see a play like this and the star and the second banana get all the attention and and then the other people kind of move around them and and offer appropriate commentary at times but in this play it seemed that all five people even the ones you thought would be more periphery they all had an interesting story that intertwined for example the the one who plays William Fox he's the head of, of Fox movies and he's the first guy that hires Step and fetch, fetch it. I mean, he tells this interesting story about his family coming from Hungary, probably Hungarian Jewish, coming to New York, living in poverty, him having to carry pails of water up five flights of stairs because the building didn't have water, and then him making himself respectable, adopting the, the way of talking, the language, the cigars, in a way, he made himself respectable and white. Uh, so, so it was an interesting story. And 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 Muhammad Ali's wife, initially, she comes out in Muslim garb, the whole regalia, and you think, well, she's just kind of there because he had a wife, and you need him need her on the stage. But as the play develops, she goes back and rebels and becomes. I mean, she was a party girl who met Ali at a dance club and, and had been making her living on her back since a young girl. And, and she had a powerful emotional story that added to it. So, so to me, that was both a strength and a weakness because it was like everybody, everybody on stage has, a, has, a, has something to say. And on the other hand, it was like, you, well, who's, what story are we listening to here? You go into it because Muhammad Ali is so famous. You think, well, it's all about Muhammad Ali and Sonny Liston and 
and why did he have this weird guy from the 30s uh, in his training camp? You leave it and you think, this is Stephen Fetch's story. He has a more powerful, how he made his way in the world when racism was on steroids. So I think that um, in its at its core, this play is really a play about identity, um, respectability politics and identity, both your own self, how you self-identify and the identities that are imposed upon you. And then the things that you do to gain respect, to elevate your status in life. So for example, Fox, the guy who was in charge of Fox Studios, like I guess what ultimately became Fox Studios, he kept saying that he made himself white. Yeah. Well, clearly his race was his race from the time that he was born. He didn't make himself white. But what he was conveying was the notion that in order to gain respect, you had to be white and you had to take on certain um, characteristics right. um, of that being white coupled with these other characteristics would provide you entree to a different world, entree to a world that is closed to people that are non-white. However, there is some status um, movement, uh, status mobility in the non-white world. And we see that with um, Muhammad Ali's uh, wife who came from um, beginnings where she was a, um, an orphan child and didn't have parents to take care of her. And there was some suggestion that maybe she may, may have been a prostitute, but then shed that whole image and hid it, but then took on a, a you know, wore the the um the Muslim hey, John, uh yeah. right the yeah the, the the Muslim garb, but then wanted to go back to wearing her regular clothes because she wanted to um take her own identity back, not necessarily being a prostitute, but not having someone define for her what was respectable. And that's what Muhammad Ali was attempting to do and, and their marriage didn't last. Do you have thoughts, Nia? <laughs> no, no, right now. A little bit later. Okay, so, so, so that that establishing identity. Well, that's why to me the play is is really kind of more about step and fetch it because here he was a learned, articulate, well-spoken, uh, dramatic actor in his youth, uh, who to make it in Hollywood made himself into this buffoon you know, and, and developed this whole way of talking and walking and 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 resenting it because he couldn't escape it. He, he couldn't, you know, he what he really wanted to do in the in the play is about he really wanted to shed the step and fetch it and become his own natural self and become a, a recognized uh actor, even though step and fetch it made him a household name, maybe and, not a not and he's a, a millionaire, and a millionaire, One of the most black millionaires in this country. But he was also reviled in the black community for being a sellout and a tongue. So he had a real tension there. I will say, I thought the acting, I mean, the, the understudy, uh, Freddie L. Fleming, was a very believable heavyweight boxer. I mean, he was actually bigger than most boxers. And, and, and I mean, you could see, and I read a little bit about him and he was a professional athlete, professional basketball player, but he hurt himself. Yeah, yeah. So I was reflecting on my own life while watching this play. I was looking at uh, the character uh, uh, that was playing the role of Stephen Fetcher and, and, and Muhammad Ali and thinking about the lack of, of black icons in the black community and why these people became so important to us. I mean, Muhammad, Muhammad Ali was obviously, he was loved by the whole world, but he was dearly, deeply loved by the black community. And um, I think that, you know, he was talented, he was beautiful, you know, he had charisma and, and he was a world champion in a very brutal sport, you know, if, if we're being honest. But the thing is there was a lack of focus and there was a lack of heroes. There were a lack of, when you look back in a particularly um, post civil war and you look in the, the South and really the rest of the country, 
all of the monuments that were erected in this country, <laughs> the vast majority of those monuments are from Civil War people who were uh, attempting to secede from the nation. You know, they were traitors to the nation. And just imagine what that feels like when here are the people many of which committed crimes against humanity by enslaving people, and yet we erect monuments to them, um, even in places like Central Park, New York City. So if having this lack of any, I, I did not see a statue erected to a black person until I'm, I'm gonna say until I was about 55 years old. That was the first time in my life that I saw a statue erected to a black person. So it sends a very powerful message that you are nothing, you mean nothing, you've contributed nothing. When in fact, we really built this country in, in, in a significant way. So um, this play made me look at the iconography and the metamorphosis of that, uh, the evolution of the iconography, how it was that step and fetch it was sort of the only one at, at a point. We did have Jack Johnson, and I have some notes here about Jack Johnson, who was a professional boxer who um, Muhammad Ali wanted to find out about his secret his secret punch. And, and so the, the premise of this relationship between Muhammad Ali and Stephen Fetchett is that Stephen Fetchett had a personal relationship with Jack Johnson and Muhammad Ali was trying to glean information out of Stephen Fetchett about Jack Johnson's special punch. And then you, I later learned that that punch was the thing that took out Sonny Liston. Yes, so, so to me, that was kind of a weak thread. Um, you know, you'd think, well, the playwright was really clever to think up this imaginary thing of Muhammad Ali and who's the most unlikely person he would be friends with. Why step and fetch it, this guy who was reviled in the certainly the black community of the 60s. Well, the truth was, it was a true story. And That's there were yeah. and and the playwright was pushed into was encouraged to do this play because he'd seen pictures of the two of them together. And and yes, uh the play says Muhammad Ali brought him there to teach him because Stephen Fetchett would remember Jack Johnson's anchor punch, a special overhand. Well, that's a pretty weak read. I mean, like Muhammad Ali was in the gym all the time. He knew every way in the world to hit another man. There was no... I, and I can't imagine that Stephen Fetchett would know <laughs> how this punch worked. I mean, he was a comedian. How would he know? Right. So, so, so there was. I mean, I I, I love the production, and we we got these special seats up on the side because we got the ticket so late, which really was a wonderful way to watch the movie. Um, and and the acting was wonderful, especially. I mean, it, it was. I mean, Stephen Fetchett looked like step must a uh, step and fetch it. I mean the acting was letter perfect. And the and, and the, he looked just the, the the actor looked like physically looked like step and fetch it. And and the actor who played Muhammad Ali looked a lot like Muhammad Ali. He looked like a bigger, stronger Muhammad <laughs> Ali. He did, you know. Yes. And he 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 bounced around on the stage and either he'd done some boxing in his life or they'd trained him forever. He looked like a boxer. It, it was wonderfully done. I, I you know, I, I don't know that I rate it the best play because kind of what message did you come away with? This the search for identity and establishing. Yeah, maybe maybe that was it. Yeah, well, for me, you know, sitting there with 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 uh, Nia, I'm thinking, okay, so here's Nia, a young black woman who didn't know, had never heard of Step and Fetch It. Um, knew who Muhammad Ali was, but it's unlikely that, you know, you had this kind of insight into him and, and him being married to um, a Muslim woman. So it, I think it's educational. And I think that there's a lot of information about our history that gets lost. And um, it's incumbent upon our generation to try to do whatever we can to pass it on to the next. So. Any, any any thoughts, Nia? We're putting you on. Um, <laughs> putting me on blast. <laughs> we 
No, it was it was um, it was a really good play. Like Sharon said, it was uh, in many ways sort of a history lesson for me. As she mentioned, I had no clue who Step and Fetch it was. I was aware of Muhammad Ali, um, as I think everyone is. Um, the threads that my dad was talking about was also really interesting. It made the play much more um, inclusive. There weren't just exposition lines just to provide information to move the plot along it was all very natural everything wove together in a very interesting way um i did really enjoy i actually did enjoy that seemingly very light thread of why step and fetch or why muhammad ali brought in step and fetch it because it culminated towards the end of the play and it turned into this entire thing of according to step and fetch it um was it jack johnson who was the boxer is that what his name was um how he called upon the rage of the slaves who were taken and and threw themselves over the boat who because they'd rather be dead than being chains and use that rage of all the hundreds thousands of those who had died as slaves and that's what he called upon so it wasn't just an overhand punch it was an overhand punch filled with ancestral rage which is what made it so powerful and, and that was sort of the culmination and that sort of tied up all of these threads between talking about step and fetch it and what he had to sort of put himself through in order to work not just his way into Hollywood and yes he became a millionaire and made lots and lots of money but he opened the door for every other black person um, to be in the limelight and I think one of my favorite lines in the play was he was getting a little hot with Muhammad Ali and and he yells at him you know I snuck in the back door so that you could walk into the front and that yeah. was really really powerful it was that it really hit me and, and sort of put that sort of choice into perspective fantastic play if you have time this weekend definitely go see it it was it was it was really well done I think that's a great way to close this. Um, I think you're right, Nia. That was one of the most powerful lines. And um, yeah, I, w I would recommend this play. Yeah, Highly. that's it too. So it's kind of about the contortions black people have to do to mm. succeed in a white world, which is what Step and Fetch's stories was about. And also to some extent, Muhammad Ali's. Oh, yeah. So good. So we have a, so we're seeing another play tomorrow night, another one Sunday. Boy, we're, we're just theater going aficionados <laughs> yeah yeah it'd be nice if some of these tickets were free they are this weekend all, all, all this weekend <laughs> okay very good bye folks see you so soon long.